Hello everyone and welcome to this video on International Perspectives on Critical Infrastructure. This is episode number nine in my series of YouTube videos focused on critical infrastructure risk assessment and protection. My name is Ernie Hayden. In today's world, the importance of critical infrastructure cannot be overstated. Critical infrastructure refers to the systems and structures that are essential for the functioning of our society such as transportation networks, power grids, water supply systems, and communication networks. In this video, we'll be discussing the importance of critical infrastructure from an international perspective and how other countries identify and categorize their critical infrastructure. By the way, this video is based on Chapter 1.3, International Perspectives on Critical Infrastructure, in my book, Critical Infrastructure Risk Assessment, published by Rothstein, and available at Amazon. When it comes to securing and maintaining critical infrastructure, different countries face different challenges. For example, in developed countries, aging infrastructure is a major issue. Many of these countries have infrastructure that was built decades ago and is in urgent need of repair and upgrading. In developing countries, the challenge is often to build new infrastructure to meet the needs of a growing population. In some countries, they are susceptible to various natural threats, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, cyclones, and so forth. Another challenge faced by countries is the growing threat of cyber attacks. With the increased reliance on technology, critical infrastructure is becoming increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks. Hackers can easily gain access to a system and cause extensive damage, leading to the disruption of services and potential loss of life. So let's get started with our review where we can begin looking at how the five eyes, the European Union, Germany, Japan, and China view and manage their critical infrastructures. So the countries that we're going to be reviewing are what's called first the five eyes. I'll explain what that is in a moment. That constitutes the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. Then there's the European Union, Germany, Japan, and China. Now, what is the Five Eyes, if you've never heard of it? The Five Eyes is essentially an intelligence alliance formed by the English-speaking countries around the world of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom, and United States. And they have a shared definition of critical infrastructure, which you can see on this slide. But essentially, it's referred to as nationally significant infrastructure and can be broadly defined as systems, assets, facilities, and networks that provide essential services and are necessary for the national security, economic security, prosperity, and health and safety of their respective nations. And in the Five Eyes, each uh, Five Eye member has identified the following sectors as critical. So communications, energy, healthcare and public health, transportation, and water to include wastewater and stormwater systems. Now I'm going to have comparison matrices uh, as follows. So you can see there are some nuances and differences between these countries and their selections of critical infrastructure. So here's the United States. We've already discussed this. I have a video that's already been done called Seriously, a History of Critical Infrastructure Lists that I'd welcome you to take a look at and give you the history of how this list came to be. But you can see that there are 16 different sectors and I'm not gonna belabor this list because we've done it before, but I wanna talk about the other countries and what they're doing for critical infrastructure. Here's the list from the uh, Australia and the Australian government, the critical infrastructure is managed by the Australian government's Department of Home Affairs. Their department works closely with state and territory governments, as well as with the private sector to identify and protect critical infrastructure from various threats. And you can see on this list that they have uh, one nuance versus the United States and that is space technology. And the other one is data storage or processing. And I'd like you to pay attention to space technology because later on we're going to see that surface again uh, for another country. 
in Canada, their government is also in step with the United States and the United Kingdom relative to recognizing that there are critical infrastructure sectors that require focus and attention for protection. Public Safety of Canada is the primary agency coordinating critical infrastructure policy and analysis. And they basically break their critical infrastructure strategy down into three different areas that are including cyber protection, physical protection, and emergency management. For the United Kingdom, here is their list of different areas. And again, I've highlighted space. We saw that before with Australia because it's kind of unique and uh, it's an area that would probably need some attention in the United States. Uh, the Center for the Protection of National Infrastructure, or CPNI, is the United Kingdom's Department of Homeland Security. Their role is to support protection of national security against terrorism and other threats. And the CPNI reports to the Director General of MI5, or Security Services. The CPNI's charge is to provide assistance and advice to UK entities with responsibility for protecting most critical elements of the UK's national infrastructure from national security threats. In the European Union, critical infrastructure is managed at the national level for the different member states, with each member state responsible for identifying and protecting its own critical infrastructure. But the EU also has a critical infrastructure directive that sets minimum standards for the protection of critical infrastructure across the member states. So in this slide, you can see that they have defined what critical infrastructure is. I'm not gonna read it. And then they have a, a essentially a program called the European Program for Critical Infrastructure Protection that sets the overall framework for activities aimed at improving the protection of critical infrastructure in Europe across all the different member states. And they also have a an approach which is uh, similar to the United States, where it's an all hazards approach. And this comes out of that particular document that I mentioned. Uh, you can see it's, it's kind of uh, short and sweet, if you will. Their energy sector focuses on electricity, oil and gas and in transport, it's road transportation, rail transport, air transport, inland waterways, and ocean and short sea shipping. They also happen to have some communication in 2004, which also includes a list of other critical infrastructures that they were concerned about, such as energy installations and networks, communications and information technology, finance such as banking, securities and investment, and healthcare. And one thing I liked about their list is that they separately included such things as blood supply facilities, laboratories, pharmaceuticals, search and rescue, and emergency services. Now in the United States, emergency services and search and rescue is basically a separate section. Also they had food, water, transport, production, storage, and transportation of dangerous goods, and uh, the government sector. Regarding Germany, since 2009, Germany has formalized a critical infrastructure program and strategy that's overseen by the Federal Ministry of the Interior, or Federal MOI. And uh, here's their listing, as you can see, again, very similar to the United States, with a few nuances such as media, for example, and cultural objects or cultural heritage. A unique ad item uh, added to the strategy is compar as compared to others is a definition of the term criticality. And this term is added to the German, is added by the German government in determining what sectors are truly important enough to be designated as critical infrastructure. And they have a definition of criticality, which says criticality is a relative measure of the importance of a given infrastructure in terms of the impact of its disruption or functional failure on the security of supply. And the criticality of an infrastructure may be systemic or symbolic in nature or both. For instance, electricity 
is systemic since it supports so many different levels of society and from power supply to lighting, etc. And the other aspect would be the symbolic, such as a stadium or a cultural uh, facility. Germany, they've also broken down different types of threats that could be considered for their critical infrastructure. They have natural events, terrorism, crime and war, and then technical failure or human error, which again is kind of an interesting approach because you don't see that in other countries. And natural events are pretty straightforward, uh, extreme weather, fires, and so forth. The terrorism, crime, and war Again, pretty straightforward, nothing really extravagant or new there. And then technical failure and human error, this is new. They have system failure. So for example, insufficient or excessive complexity of planning, defective hardware and or software bugs. Interesting. Negligence, accidents and emergencies, and then failures in an organization or shortcomings in risk and crisis management. So. This can actually go back to saying an organization is failing in the area of critical infrastructure just because they, they aren't uh, satisfactorily prepared. Relative to Japan, they have, also have a critical infrastructure approach. Uh, it's run by their government. And they have a definition, which I would like to read in this case. Critical infrastructure is the backbone of national life and economic activities formed by businesses providing services that are extremely difficult to be substituted. If the function of the services is suspended, deteriorates, or becomes unavailable, it could have a significant impact on the national life and economic activities. And they have 14 different sectors. And it's a lot different than what we've seen in other countries. You can see they've broken out, for instance, aviation, airport, railway. They're separate rather than being part of transportation. Then you have electric power supply and gas supply. So again, energy. And then on the right-hand column, you'll see things like credit card services is considered a critical infrastructure. Uh, which is under finance in other countries. And at least it's a little bit, like I said, a little bit different approach. And even though this is a bit of an eye chart, uh, and I'm definitely not going to read this to you, the, uh, this comes out of their cybersecurity policy for critical infrastructure protection. And you can see there's a lot and lot of detail on the different uh, areas. And finally, relative to China, the Chinese government is, uh, manages the critical infrastructure in their country through various different agencies, including the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology and the National Development and Reform Commission. And one thing that's always important to recognize is the Chinese government does place strong emphasis on the protection of its critical infrastructure from cyber threats, let alone natural disasters. In conclusion, critical infrastructure is essential to the functioning of modern society and the economy. Different countries have different approaches to managing and protecting their critical infrastructure, but they all share a common goal of ensuring that these essential systems remain operational and secure. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. Thanks for watching, and if you like this series, please like and please subscribe. Thanks a million for your time and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a good day.